There he is, Bag Milk. How you doing, my friend? Doing very well. How you doing, boys? Good, good. You're back from uh, vacay. Yeah, yeah, I had to check out. I had to uh, punish my liver a little bit. It had been a while since the playoffs ended for the Oilers, so I had to make sure the liver was still working, so all is well. Well, you know what? We're going to be going on a decent run again next year. I think it's 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 a good idea to keep that practice up, right? I mean, we have to keep up on this end as like, fans of the team. Like, we try well, to find out reasons to day drink now just to <laughs> keep in line. Well, if there's one thing that this playoff run taught me, it's that I was out of practice <laughs> for a six week bender like that. So I think that's incredibly important that we all maintain our, yeah. our, our, our high levels of performance. I want to uh, get this out of the way because there's already the conversation about the draft and what, what we're going to do. And there's lots of things that the Oilers obviously uh, need to do. What are they going to do? But this name keeps popping up. Who is Jack Hughes bag milk? Jack Hughes is a prospect that kind of lands and falls within the general range of where the Oilers are picking. So we did a profile on him yesterday at OilersNation.com as just as a potential option that the Oilers may have available to them at 29th overall. Okay. It's going to be, it's uh, by all accounts, it's a little bit of a weird draft in the sense that some kids didn't get a chance to play as much as others because of everything that's been going on in the world. So it's going to be an interesting draft. The Oilers only pick mm. in the first round and then not again until the fifth. So the question kind of is, do they take that pick on a kid like Jack Hughes or whoever falls within that range, or do they trade it for more picks? Do they package it up with somebody else to get a player that can help the team now? It's going to be an interesting draft for the others. Does Ken have a a, a particular pattern with, with the drafts? Is he a trade-a-pick guy more often than he is a hang-on-to-a-pick guy? The, in recent memory, he's been take a use a pick guy, but even last year, you know, he traded down a couple of spots to get Xavier Borgo and it mm -hmm. ended up working out well because that pick looks like it's going to turn out pretty well, at least in the early days. And then he got some more bullets in the gun afterwards. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him trade it for more picks again this year. But uh, again, we'll find out next Thursday, I believe. So just after the, the, the second to last round of the playoffs... Um, a um, a Toronto centric broadcast outlet that deals with sports released this <laughs> article that suggested that um, the Leafs had lost to a team that had made the Stanley Cup Finals the last three times that they had been, and it's it's true. I, I shouldn't mm -hmm. be suggesting that it's not correct information, but it was just. A typical article you would see from a fan base that is bolstered by a <laughs> media outlet that is also a bunch of fans of the team. And I remember saying, I, I made some asshole tweet back at them. <laughs> no, and, no. and it doesn't matter. Um, but the scores, God, did you see this article? So on top of at, like releasing that, look at this. The last three times that the Leafs have been in the playoffs, they've lost in the opening round to the team that's made to the Stanley Cup playoff. I wanted to so desperately to tweet back at them. Where's the article about the Oilers losing to the team that won the Stanley Cup playoffs? You Anyway, um, last night they released an article. It's the score, if you're wondering. Um, they released an article about the Maple Leafs being one of the top contenders for the Stanley Cup next year. Yeah, I mean, th I mean that's not at all surprising. Like the Leafs could have missed the playoffs, and they would have articles coming out that they're going to be contenders <laughs> next year. So, like, that's not at all surprising. Uh, the reality is, though, that the the Leafs are going to be good again next year. Yeah, uh, they were this year. They were last year. So, yeah, I, I'll buy that they'll be good. Will they be cup contenders? Well, they need to get through the first round first, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty heavy to it's a it's a heavy prediction to say, oh yeah, they're going all the way to the finals when they can't get out of the first round and haven't since the nineties. So we'll see what happens. Like I like I said, I think the Leafs are gonna be fine. They're gonna be good. They've got plenty of good players. Um, whether or not they can actually get over that hump is another thing. I'm more concerned, like as much as it's fun to make fun of the Leafs for those lofty projections, I'm more concerned about what's going on here. Like going to the Western conference finals yeah. for the Oilers was huge. And we had a great time during that run, but you can't just have that as a one and done. So yeah, it's funny to watch the Leafs 
do mental gymnastics about where they're going to end up next year before even playing a shift. But that's kind of par for the course. We've got at least the good news is we've only got two and a half more months of it before the season starts. Yeah, right? there'll be lots of speculation for sure. One of the things that uh, that I always find interesting is how quickly after the playoffs and after somebody hoists the cup that we start talking about their chances or other teams' chances of winning it again next year. So there's always that 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 conversation in the summer. It almost happens immediately. Are the Colorado oh, yeah. Avalanche going to repeat again next year? I think if you're being realistic as a Edmonton Oilers fan, as good as the team was this year and as exciting as that was, we have got a lot of work to do in the off season to help prepare. I mean, goaltending, oh, I mean, are we going to be hanging on to Tyson Berry? What are they doing with that? There's just so many, th- so many balls in the air for Oilers right now um, that I think it's very difficult to predict any kind of outcome for, for Edmonton. Yeah, I mean, the Ken Holland's got a ton of work to do. Like you yeah. said, there's he doesn't have a whole lot of cap space to play with. He has some options of potential trades that could free some of that up. But until those trades or moves actually happen or do not happen, it's kind of tough to speculate what's going to go on. Right now, the Oilers have uh, just over $7 million in cap space to work with um, before any of these moves that we're talking about happen and before Oscar Kleppbaum gets moved to the LTIR. So not a whole lot of space to play with, especially if you want to bring a guy like Evander Kane back. So we'll yeah. see what happens there. There's This is going to be a really interesting offseason for the Oilers. This is not going to be an easy one for Ken Holland by any means. Well, and I would even suggest, comparatively speaking, to the other teams that are part of a conversation about a run in the playoffs again next year, the Oilers have more work to do than most of them. Or they've got some heavy lifting to do yeah. in some key areas. Like you talked about goaltending. Who knows what's going on with yeah. Mike Smith? We don't even know if he's going to come back next year to finish off his contract or if he's going to retire. Same with Duncan Keith. I would imagine if I was to guess, this is purely a guess, I would suggest probably Duncan Keith comes back and maybe Smith doesn't. But again, that's a big hole to fill between the pipes and you don't have a lot of cash to get it done. So what's going to happen? Somebody's moving out. That's for sure, because they need some cap space to get uh, some of these items done on the to-do list before September rolls around for training camp. But how they get that done is going to be really interesting to watch. I think this is going to be one of the more interesting off-seasons the Oilers have had. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Bag Milk, we always appreciate your time. From Oilers Nation, thank you. Thanks for having me on. The Locker Room. Brought to you by Always Plumbing and Heating. Weekday mornings on 95.7 Cruise FM.